So we introduce functions pretty early in these materials. We do that for a reason. Often when students come to us and apply to our program, they have written sort of procedural code and are not very familiar with or accustomed to writing functions. In general, you're going to write a lot of functions. And so we want to lightly introduce this early and get more into it later. So I'm just going to write a very simple function. I'm going to write def simple function. And uh, def here means define, short for define. And then these two parens and a colon. So this function is just going to return 5. So you can think of this as being like a box. And you call on the box, and the box gives you a 5. So if I print this simple function, it's going to return. Oh, I actually have to call the function with parens right there. Uh, that's a common mistake. If I do that, um, then we're just printing out sort of this function definition here or function identification. But if I put parens, it's going to call. And maybe a little mnemonic there is, uh, you know, the parens sort of look like an open mouth and it's calling. So if I run this, sure enough, we get 5. So let's expand on this. Let's say 5 times 3. Well, this is just going to get us 15, right? Let's put an input statement in here. So x gets input, enter a number, and we're going to multiply 5 by x. So now our function is working its way toward doing something a little more interesting. So let's enter 6 and write. This is interesting. Why did I get 66666? Recall that input is going to return a string. It's not going to return an integer. So if I want to get my expected result, 6 times uh, 5 equals 30, then I need to cast this input to a string, sorry, to an integer. And let's do that again. And sure enough, we get 30. OK. So that's cool, but what if we don't want to take input from the user? What if we want to have this return five times something exist in our code where we can use it all the time? I'm going to go ahead and set a parameter here called x. And that goes into this function definition on line one. And then when I call, if I try to call this, but I don't offer it a value, it's going to give me an error. It's missing one required positional argument, x. So when I give this a value, I'm going to give it 6, I pass this in as an argument. And when I run it, it works. So we can think of this as a function being dynamic to whatever input you give it. And we can do all kinds of things with this, I'm going to do a best practice here and say, instead of modifying this parameter, I'm going to make a copy of it with y. And then I'm going to add 3 to y. And then I'm going to, let's say, floor divide this by 2. And when I run this, I'm going to make sure that I'm returning five times whatever that y value is. When I run this, I get 45. And you know the reason being, x is 6 here. It's 6 here. y is 6 because it's a copy of x. Then y becomes 9. And then y floor divided by 2 becomes, oh, let me just fix that. That's better. Um, y floor divided by 2, that's 9. Uh, floor divided by 2 is 4.5. Drop the 0.5, so we get 4. 
So that's going to be 5 times 4 is 20. So you can see we've made a more complex function here, and it is dynamic to whatever input we pass in. Now I could pass in a second value if I have a container for it, let's just call it z, and instead of y plus gets x, y plus gets z now. And if I run this, we get 30. The reason being we pass in 6 for x, y is 6, uh, and then y gets 7 added to it, so that's 13. And then y, uh, 13 floor divided by 2 is going to be 6, which is 30.